This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of MaxList. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. An interview gives you the chance to show why you're the right person for the job. And when you focus on your strengths as you make your case, you're more confident, energetic, and persuasive. Christy Steele is here to talk about how knowing your strengths makes you a stronger candidate. She's a senior human resources manager at Forth. It's a nonprofit working to electrify transportation. Christy has spent her career at mission centered organizations. She's also a Gallup certified strengths coach. She joins us from Eugene, Oregon. Well, let's get going, Christy. Why is it important to understand your strengths when you look for work? It helps you to show that you are a great candidate for the role, and it helps you to determine whether the role in the organization is a good candidate for you. Um, so for yourself, uh, if you can explain your strengths uh, and how they tie to the role, that's really important. But there's also decades of research that show that people who invest in their strengths, their natural talents, um, they perform better and employers know that. So if you are aware of your strengths and you can show that in your cover letter and in your interview, then they're going to see you as more likely to be a top performer uh, and a better collaborator. It's, it's hits different areas of performance. You're a human resources manager. You read applications regularly, cover letters and resumes. You talk to people in interviews. In your experience, do most candidates understand their strengths and are they communicating those? Probably not most of them, no. No, I think a lot of people, um, you know, may, may have some ideas, but but it's not super clear for them. Why do you think that happens, Christy? Why aren't applicants both understanding and emphasizing their strengths in their application materials and in their interviews? I think a lot of people aren't understanding the the value of strengths, and maybe they aren't familiar with um, what a good selling point it is. Uh, and it's just not been the way that we've done business for for most of of the history of companies, but that's beginning to change, thankfully. And why do you think that's changing? What what's happening? Well, um, there's been so much research over the past 40, 50 years that just keeps confirming again and again that if we invest time in developing our natural talents into strengths, that same amount of time compared to investing it in fixing a weakness, it's going to return so much more um, if we spend it on our, our natural talents. We get so much more out of it, and it contributes to us being better performers, uh, being happier. Um, you just feel like you had a better day when you get to work and you're using your strengths. Um, and there's tons of benefits from it, and it's they're real tangible benefits that hit the bottom line. So it's not just, you know, feel good stuff. <laughs> it actually makes profit. So um, it's a win-win really. When you get an application from a candidate who understands her or his strengths, what does that look like? What, what makes it stand out from the others that you're looking at? It can be very explicit. Sometimes people will actually list their strengths on their resume and then in the cover letter tie at least one or two strengths to the role. And I highly recommend doing that. Um, that is definitely part of what contributed to me getting my current role at Forth. Um, and sometimes it's not quite that, that explicit, um, but I can see 
the person has applied their strengths and accomplished a lot. That's another way it comes through is when people are are listing their accomplishments and not just their job duties that they held at each position. You mentioned that connection between listing your strengths and and then seeing the accomplishments in the application materials, perhaps in the resume. What are other things that you see uh, perhaps in the application or in the interview uh, when people make that uh, emphasize their strengths that are persuasive to you as a hiring manager? When someone is able to share stories of how they have used their strengths to accomplish their goals or make an impact for their organization in the past, um, that tells me that they know how to do that and they can do it again. You mentioned earlier that some companies may not still understand the value of hiring uh, workers uh, who understand their strengths. What would you say to a listener who thinks, well, if I were applying for a job with Forth, that might be an effective approach, but what if I'm applying it uh, with an organization that doesn't have that understanding? Do you think, still think it's effective, Christy, to uh, to emphasize your strengths as a candidate? It's always going to be your selling points. It's It's... Whether or not somebody knows the research and understands the value that a strengths uh, aware employee can bring, they're still going to have the experience of seeing that you are speaking well of, of what you can do for the organization if you can talk about your strengths. Um, and I, I would just say, I want to encourage people also to to consider looking for organizations that have awareness around it, because I, I believe that those organizations are providing a better experience for their employees because the, the strengths approach, it requires the organization to appreciate the unique contributions each person has to make. And therefore they value the people more. Um, so they just take better care of their people and, and treat them with respect. So I, I know not everybody is going to prioritize that, but I, I just want to encourage you to, to do that for yourself. <laughs> well, good tip. Well, le- let's talk about how you can get clear about your strengths when you do look for work, Christy. Do you, how do you recommend getting started? Should you use a self-assessment tool, for example? Um. Absolutely. That's one way to do it. Uh, I'm, of course, being a, a Gallup certified strengths coach, I'm a big fan of Clifton Strengths. And there's a lot of benefits that come from using a tool like that, um, not only because it can help help you discover what your talents are, but it will provide a report right away that helps you understand them better and, and gives you ideas for how to develop them. Um, it provides a whole framework um, for getting to know other people's strengths. And it's helpful not just to know your own, but, but that of your colleagues as well. Um, and then they, they, Gallup in particular does ongoing research um, that just provides more value for this. For instance, they recently published a study results showing how we can leverage our strengths to reduce burnout so there, it's just a lot you gain out of using a tool like that, but you can also um, work with a coach. Coaches, many of them are great at helping you discover and develop your strengths. Um, and then lastly, there's the do-it-yourself way. You can just ask the people who are close to you or ask yourself a few key questions um, to sort of figure it out yourself. Uh, some questions that you could try are, um, what are the two to three things you do best or, um, what activities leave you feeling energized and what just comes really easily and naturally to you, even before somebody showed you how to do it. Well, terrific. Let's take a break, Christy, and stay with us. When we come back, Christy Steele will continue to share her advice on how knowing your strengths makes you a stronger candidate. Your resume offers a great way to show your strengths. Does your resume do this well? Ask an expert. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. A professional writer at Top Resume will review your resume for free. 
Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Find out how to improve your resume right away or hire a top resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Christy Steele. She's a senior human resources manager at Forth. It's a nonprofit working to electrify transportation. Christy has spent her career at mission-centered organizations. She's also a Gallup certified strengths coach, and she joins us from Eugene, Oregon. Now, Christy, before the break, we were talking about how knowing your strengths makes you a stronger candidate. And we were talking at the end of the first segment about how to get started. And uh, we were talking about self-assessment. And there were three steps you recommended uh, a listener could take. You could uh, use a self-assessment tool like uh, Clifton Strengths Finder. You could work with a coach or you could ask uh, friends and families, people who know you well uh, about your strengths. What do you do next, Christy? How do you, what do you, how, what do you do with this information and how do you apply it to your job search? In preparation or just ongoing, really, um, you want to develop your strengths. And so those questions that I suggested will, or the assessment, they'll help you uncover your natural talents and through time and effort, we develop those talents into strengths. So I definitely encourage people to just continually learn and practice um, and pay attention to the strengths because that will help you start to collect stories about, oh, wow, when I used the, that strength um, on that project, it really helped me break through this difficult obstacle and achieve this great thing. And if you can collect those stories, that's what's going to help you during job interviews and and writing cover letters. Another suggestion I know you have for using your strengths uh, well during a job search is um, to remember to give yourself permission to focus and develop your strengths. Can you talk more about that? Christy, what stops people from from developing their strengths and uh, how does that happen? Well, we're all busy, <laughs> um, but there's also, I, I think, the, the sort of monkey mind of, um, you know, the, the, the negative thoughts that tell us that we're not worth it or, um, you know, putting others, others first or just other things before our own self-development. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an important first step is to just decide that you're worth investing time and energy into becoming the best version of yourself. How do you see people do that? I know in addition to being a human resources manager, you're Gallup certified strengths coach. What works well with people who do want to focus on and develop their strengths? What are they, what are they doing on a daily or regular basis? You know, it depends on your strengths. The the different sort of strategies might work best for different people. Um, For myself, uh, one thing that has helped me is to choose a strengths theme to focus on for a week or a month and maybe do a little bit of reading about it or try to implement um, a new practice around it that, uh, you know, like a mini project, (laughs) um, to help me practice that strength. Um, and, and then the next month switch to a new one where, you know, I'm just like carving out a little bit of time each day or each week, um, to think about it, to read about it and to practice it. Another piece of advice I know that you share, uh, when thinking about your strengths and how to use them or emphasize them rather in a job search is to consider what might be stopping you from using your strengths. What are common barriers that you see people struggle with Christy that prevent them from using their strengths? Um, I think we naturally have this idea that it makes more sense to fix our weaknesses or already 
good at that thing. So we don't need to work on it. Um, and, and so flipping that switch and realizing that we'll get more out of working on what we're already good at, um, and that we can use that actually more effectively sometimes to, um, manage the weak areas. Um, if I could share a little, a quick story here about that, um, the Clifton Strengths um, breaks down into four main categories, and each category is called a domain. It describes how people typically use those strengths, and one of them is called executing. It's about getting things done. Um, I had a colleague who was just incredible at getting so much done, and when we did the strengths assessment at that company, I was shocked to see that she did not have any executing things in her top five and when I asked her about this, she just shared, well, I use this other strength to trick myself into getting things done. Um, so you can develop the, the, the strengths, the talents that you have that you're naturally good at to the point that they help you overcome uh, and manage the, the weaker areas in a way that actually you probably enjoy <laughs> and, and might work better than just trying to to fix that that thing that you're naturally not that great at you're you're not ever going to get as good at it as the thing that you're naturally good at terrific you talked earlier about the importance of having stories that would illustrate your strengths uh, that you could use in application materials and interviews i know you're also a big fan of practicing those stories how do you recommend people prepare and practice stories about their strengths in a way that's going to be appealing to hiring managers? Yeah, I think it really helps to, um, you know, take a few notes at least and or have a, a list of stories that you might use and the strengths you're going to tie them to, and then just practice telling them out loud. Um, you can have somebody listen in and give you feedback or not. Um, but practicing saying it out loud, I think, will help you get comfortable um, sharing the story. And if you run through it a few times, then you'll start to to sound really confident as you share it. Um, yeah, and that that also, I think, is, you know, for better or worse, something that was really helpful during an interview is to sound confident. Finally, Christy, how do you recommend people choose the strengths that they emphasize when they're doing a job search. We, we all have many talents. What What's going to matter most to an employer who's like you, who's looking at uh, a cover letter or interviewing a candidate? If there's a, a clear match between the strengths needed to excel in the role and the strengths that the job candidate has, and then they show up and they're drawing that connection um, and telling the stories and and sort of proving that theory I have as the interviewer that I, I think this person has the strengths needed for the role. And then they come and tell me the stories that prove it. Um, that really kind of seals the deal in my mind. It, it makes makes it very clear to me that the person is a very strong candidate. What would you recommend a candidate do in preparation for putting together that application or getting ready for that interview? They've got their strengths. They perhaps have access to a job description. How do you, how would you suggest uh, an applicant put it all together so they could make that connection that's going to be persuasive to you as a hiring manager? Look for what seems like the most important parts of that job, what, what are you going to be spending the most time on if you take this job? And then consider what strengths you have that will support your success at those parts of the job. If you're having trouble answering that, then it might not be the right job. But if you, that seems clear to you, then just dig into that and start uh, thinking of the stories you can share that that show that connection. Besides looking at a job description or perhaps a website, is there any other research you would recommend a candidate do in order to make those connections between uh, the applicant's strengths and the needs of the employer? 
You can always uh, learn a lot by talking to other people who've worked at the organization or um, other people who've held similar roles at other organizations. If it's a new role to you, especially, that, that can be really important to make sure that you have a clear understanding of the role you're applying for. Um, and, you know, it's always, I find it helpful to read reviews online Um as well of, of the organization. And, and sometimes you can learn about the role. I've even looked up the, you know, LinkedIn profiles of who, who held this role in the past at this organization and what, what do they have in their uh, LinkedIn that tells me what their strengths are um, to, to see if I can glean from that, what kind of person might be good in this role. Well, it's been a terrific conversation, Christy. Now tell us what's next for you. Uh, well, I am full time at Forth, and they were actually uh, interested in and already doing a little bit of work with Clifton Strengths before I started there. So, part of my role is to just really um, take that further um, with this team, and I'll, I'll soon be developing a, a program that sort of brings new hires into the fold and and helps them discover their strengths and learn the importance of them, um, just like we've already done with the team that, that's already here. Um, and then also a program to help people leaders learn how to take a strengths-based approach with their team members and, and really coach them to develop their strengths. So I'm excited about um, those projects coming up. I know listeners can learn more about Forth and your work there by visiting the Forth website. That URL is forthmobility.org, and that you also invite listeners to connect with you on LinkedIn. As always, I hope they'll mention they heard you on Find Your Dream Job when they do reach out to you. Now, Christy, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how knowing your strengths makes you a stronger candidate? Continuous development of your strengths is the most effective way to become the best version of yourself. So just keep learning and practicing, know yourself, develop yourself, and that will help you at work as well as in your personal life um, projects and relationships as well. You'll, you'll be happier as well as more successful and a stronger candidate. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be Nick Poloni. He's the head of recruitment at Cascadia Search Group. Nick is also an executive recruiter in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. Recruiters like Nick look at LinkedIn every day in search of candidates. Some pages catch his eye, others do not. Wouldn't you like to know what you can do to get his attention? Join us next Wednesday when Nick Poloni and I talk about how to make your LinkedIn profile stand out to a recruiter. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan thornton Hobb schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislenberry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorello. Ryan Morrison of Podfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week. 